London A-listed Cora Gold is a West African gold developer with uh, projects in the process of being de-risked in Mali and Senegal in two well-known gold belts. Chief executive is Bert Monroe. He joins us now on the line. Uh, Bert, welcome. It's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you again. I just wanted to ask, first of all, just update us on what it is you're doing and what you see as the, uh, the news at the moment that we should be considering because this is a project which you you're undertaking a lot of, um, of activity on at the moment. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, we've obviously, as you said, we've got gold exploration ground across Mali and Senegal in West Africa, a hugely prospective region. Um, our main project is called San Ancoro. We've recently just um, produced our feasibility study on the project. So our main focus is really now on, on financing that project and getting it into construction, looking to move into being a, a producing gold mining company. What about the, the recent um, news flow around San Ancoro and just update us on the economics of the project and the optimization process you're going through at the moment? Yeah, sure. So San Ancoro is an, an oxide focused gold mine, uh, gold mining project. Uh, so it'll be an open pit gold mining operation. Um, our focus is on uh, a seven year reserve life. We've got significant mine life potential beyond that, we believe. Uh, so the study showed a very quick payback. 1.2 year payback on, on initial capital uh, and over 50% IRR uh, and you're averaging around 60,000 ounces of gold production a year. So, so for us, it's a, it's a low technical risk project uh, with some really exciting economics with, with, quick, with quick payback. What gold price are you working on on this then? Now you know the economics of the project. We're, talk, we're talking gold, I think, around about 1,800 uh, an ounce. Yeah, the so we were... Yeah, so we ran our, our headline numbers at 1750 gold price, which at the time was the prevailing gold price in the market. We also ran sensitivities down at, at 1650 as well. So, um, yeah. So what, um, tell us a little bit more then about uh, where you are in, in the grand scheme of things. An ultimate uh, goal, of course, is to start production. There's a lot to happen between now and then. Uh, what is uh, the, the mile, what are the milestones to watch out for along that path? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, over the last two years, we've, we've more than tripled our gold resources in the ground. Um, around a year ago, we started our feasibility study. Uh, alongside that, we also have done our environmental and social impact studies as well. Um, so the project's fully environmentally permitted. Uh, we just, in the last week or so, we published our feasibility studies, which is a, which is a significant milestone for the company. And looking forward, we're now focused around financing the project uh, before moving into, into construction. I'm very interested in the ESG side of it, uh, mostly about the, uh, the the push that mining companies are now undertaking to ensure that they uh, are as green as possible in trying to get metals out of the ground. I notice actually that um, you're considering solar hybrid options. This is really important. How are you approaching this? And does it add extra cost to the, the cost base of developing this project? Yeah, absolutely. That was something which was really important to me. And I really pushed the team to make sure we looked at doing uh, the solar hybrid power option. Like over 50 percent of mining projects in Africa, we're, we're an off grid project. So we're, we're providing our own power for the project. Um, obviously, there's been huge advances over the last decade um, in that region. So in that area. So we are we are building a solar farm um, as well as having, I guess, backup diesel generators as well. So obviously massive reduce, massively reduces our, our diesel usage, our carbon footprint, which is which is fantastically positive. Um, ultimately, from a cost perspective, at today's at today's fuel price, it also it also lowers our power cost as well. So it has a, has that other benefit as well for shareholders. Let me talk a little bit more about um, the the um, environment in which you're working there, the geological environment. Because as I said at the top, you you are in what is essentially a, a very well known gold belt. Uh, what are the prospects, the long term prospects, and are you intending to spread your footprint out to try and get as much um, of the of, of the of the potential as possible in the area. Sure. So we've defined uh, a mineral resource estimate of nine hundred and twenty thousand ounces of gold. Uh, the vast majority of that is is both in the indicator category, but also in in oxide and transitional material. Um, so for listeners, that essentially means that it's um it's a free digging material. You don't have to drill and blast, and it doesn't need any significant crushing. Um, over and above that, we've also delineated an up to one point three million ounce exploration target. That's based off drilled. Um, of, that's based off drill hole data, uh, and that's all within eight kilometres of our existing deposit. So you've got sort of line of sight to around two million ounces of gold in the ground um, on our permit area. 
Uh, but as you as you alluded to, we've got over a thousand square kilometers of ground um, in Mali. Uh, so a huge land package. And we're surrounded within two hours drive of us. There's um, a number of operating gold mines as, as well as large gold projects. So we really are in a, in a really good gold, uh, a gold spot in Mali. Let me let me take a look at the share price, if we can bring up a chart uh, showing what's what's happened. Um, there's a couple of things um, for I, I, I have said I don't invest in Cora Gold, but it's an interesting story. And I think the opportunities are obviously going to be there in the longer term. You certainly seem like you're you're approaching the hurdles that you are um, that you're meeting uh, with, with with some um, real vigor to try and get this uh, project up and running uh, into a fully uh, developmental mine. Um, the, the share price chart seems to have been going in one direction only recently. I have to say at this point, I, I think it's worth mentioning as well that Mali and Senegal, there is a, a political risk, I imagine, in the share price. Um, what are you telling investors about where the share price is, what you're doing and uh, where the project is planning to go? Yeah, look, obviously, it's been extremely frustrating from a share price perspective this year. Uh, as you said, it's been a downward trend. I think um, last year we had a very positive year from a share price perspective. We, we released um, a lot of very exciting draw results and the share price moved up um, very successfully over the course of last year. Alongside that, the gold price obviously tipped over, over $2,000. So I think this year we've seen, um, I guess, on two sides, you've got um, you've had a softening of the gold price in, in the earlier part of the year. Obviously, it's, it's recently been ticking up, which is, which is good to see. Uh, but I think Combined with that, we've obviously been very focused on delivering a feasibility study. And I think um, whilst we've been completing that feasibility study, I guess we've been in a slightly lower volume of news environment. Uh, and now, obviously, we're going into a period of, of financing before we move into construction. Um, I think it's, it's probably worth noting that the projects, once they're, once they're funded and they move into construction, generally speaking, they obviously re-rate significantly as they continue to de-risk towards cash flow. But I suppose we've been in a Slightly frustrating period, certainly from my perspective and I'm sure for shareholders um, as we've gone through completing the study with with lower news flow and also probably a slightly weaker gold price environment earlier in the year. It seems to be correcting now the gold price, which is positive to see. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure I can add much more than that. It's been a little bit frustrating, yes. No, and of course, I know you're not a gold analyst as such for the, for the metal, but you've obviously got one eye on what's going on. What are you hearing in terms of the advice you're being given about the direction of the price of gold? I mean, I suppose like everyone else, I, I, I read the sort of bank forecast and I read various um, experts who are, who are forecasting where the gold price are going. I don't think there's anyone who's foreseeing it dropping significantly from here. I think most people's forecasts are for it to stay at or above 17.50 gold price for the for the near to short for the medium to short term. Um, so for me, I'm I'm confident that the gold price is 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 in a strong position. And I think obviously, as, as you've alluded to, my focus is really about delivering a low cost um, operating project. So you know, our all-in sustaining cost is below. Thousand dollars an ounce. So if, if we can be producing gold at under a thousand dollars an ounce, there should be plenty of margin for our shareholders. Yeah, you've you've spoken a little bit about uh, the pipeline of news expected. Um, where do we go from here? Just to outline again, if you can, the big picture of things as to what we should be waiting for uh, to give that signposting that the share price is on a on a turn. Absolutely, as I said, yeah, we've just delivered our feasibility study. Uh, we're now in a excuse me a process of of financing the project. Um, we're currently in, in active discussions with lending banks um, around debt financing the project. We've also have a $25 million term sheet with our largest shareholder group, Lionhead Capital, which is currently under negotiation uh, to go up to $30 million of, of financing. So we're currently in an active phase of financing the project. Uh, once that's concluded, obviously, we'll be looking to move into construction uh, as quickly as possible. Um, the construction period is, is around 15 months um, after you've done detailed engineering. Uh, before you move into commissioning and gold production. So a really exciting uh, few months and years ahead as we move from being essentially an explorer developer into a, into a producing gold company. Well, look, uh, we look forward to catching up with you again when, uh, when things uh, start to turn the corner and uh, do keep in touch. It's been a pleasure to, to, to speak to you about developments at Cora Gold. That's Bert Munro. He's the chief executive of the AIM listed uh, company Cora Gold, which has uh, the assets that it's uh, pushing forward as projects in Mali and Senegal.